Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Real United States video blog. I'm your host Paul Campbell and I'm doing a short series on building with stone here in the United States. Now building with stone is not a terribly popular technique anymore. But in the early part of the 20th century and certainly in the 19th century it was quite popular because the availability of brick in this part of the country or of concrete block was essentially non-existent. Many people used stone, especially for foundations and footings. Now foundations were typically built out of a regular field stone, a round stone like this, but the footings, once they got above the earth, were built out of cut stone. Now some of them were still field stone footings, but the, the footings often were cut now they were cut out of much larger stones than this, but for practicality purposes I'm going to use a small stone and demonstrate how these stones would have been cut a hundred years or 150 years ago. And that would have been done simply with a chisel, although they wouldn't have had the advantage of this nice guard and grip, but this is something that's just been developed in the last couple of decades. And certainly when I was a, a young fellow this uh, would have just been a bare handle that I used. Now this is a two inch chisel. Uh, this is cold forged. It's just been hammered in a large forging press to give it uh, good material hardness. Uh, often they're only an inch wide. Uh, you can also find them at most hardware stores in about four inch called a brick set. But I just wanted to demonstrate for you how stone would have been cut manually for foundation work for part of this series. So I'm going to cut this one. This is one I cut earlier. This is a piece of granite. I don't know how the lighting is. I don't have the advantage of having a camera operator today, but this is a nice piece of gray granite that I cut with a chisel. Now I didn't cut exactly along my score line because it's going to cleave along the natural plane of the stone wherever the grain of the stone happens to be. So ideally you want to try and find that grain in the stone, which in granite is not always the easiest thing in the world to do. I believe this one runs this way. And I'm going to attempt to cut this. This is about a four pound sledgehammer. And uh, this also, a little bit lighter sledgehammer, but this actually would be used on larger stones and would be your chisel. So if you had a large stone, you would set that edge down and strike this with another hammer. And these also are available in, to this day, in much larger sizes. You get like a 10 pound one that you would then strike with a 10 or 12 or 16 pound sledgehammer. But that would be for cutting much larger stones by hand. So let's see what we can do and try and find the grain. Now I don't know how successful we're gonna be or how long this is gonna take, but we're gonna give it a shot. You want to score your stone. Relatively light strikes. Again, trying to follow the grain until you get a mark in the stone to rest your chisel in. I'm fairly certain this is a piece of granite. I didn't wash it off to really try and see. I am neither a geologist nor a professional stone cutter. For me, this is just sort of a cathartic kind of a pastime. So I try to follow the score line. I don't know if you can see that there, that I'm forming along there. Let's see if I can prop this up. A little bit so I can score it at least some on the end. Of course anytime you're trying to do something on camera things are going to not go quite as you want. 
which means there's this distinct possibility I'll either break my wrist, put out my eye, or have the stone explode on me. Beverly's not home at the moment to run the camera, so I'm unsupervised. I always like to do something stupid and dangerous when I'm alone. For any of you at home watching this, it's strongly recommended that you wear some sort of eye protection. I do have safety glasses, safety lenses in my glasses. I should probably be wearing some additional protection. And some ear protection would be highly recommended since the impacts of the hammer on the chisel make very large peaks in the audio, kind of tough on your ears. Again, this is a, a patient person's occupation, or sport in my case. This is not something you do in a hurry. Although it's not a terribly involved process, this stone took me about 13 minutes to cut. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about cutting stone by hand is you never know exactly when you're going to get deep enough into it that it's going to cleave. So when it does go, it's kind of a surprise. A pleasant surprise, usually. But a surprise nonetheless. And you can see, perhaps, how that groove is forming in the stone as I just follow along, keep moving the chisel in as straight a line as possible keep chipping into the stone. I'm trying to keep it facing the camera, which is not particularly convenient for doing this, but I want you to be able to see it. Once you get a groove like this, your strikes can become a little harder. As that groove will hold the, the blade of the chisel in place somewhat, you still run the risk of having it jump away from you. That is the advantage to having this plastic guard on there, so if you slip off the edge like that, it protects your fingers and your wrist somewhat. It's not infallible. I have clipped myself a few times, and it's unpleasant. It'd be really nice if I had an assistant to just hold the rock while I did this, wouldn't it? Any volunteers? piece of it is cleaved off along its natural plane. So maybe that means we're getting close. It does. There goes our cut stone. And while I didn't get a perfectly even cut, I could go back here now and clean this up, but I just wanted to show you that it's it's not a hugely involved process, although each stone takes, you know, some time, and collectively it would take a lot of time. A professional stone cutter would obviously finish cutting this to a nice even plane, and then these would be laid up in the wall facing out like this, so you'd have a nice cut face on your foundation walls. Isn't that pretty? So, very pretty. So hopefully in this series we're going to be able to show you some more of the applications of building with stone here in the United States. I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as soon as I possibly can. If you share this with your friends and family, that would be 
very much appreciated. That helps us out a lot. And as always, thank you for watching.